Uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome to ask me anything about Madhi and uh, we are from Madhi Foundation and uh, we have the founder and CEO of Madhi with us here Malia and I'm a part of the people and culture team at Madhi. I lead the people and culture vertical. Uh, at Madhi we actually believe that foundational literacy is uh, and numeracy learning gaps among children must be eliminated uh, over the next few years in order for it to not become a monumental crisis, right? Uh, and we want to ensure that all children uh, have access to quality education. Uh, so we do everything possible uh, to achieve that vision that we have. And today we wanted to share about what we do at Madhi and hear from Malia about uh, how we function at Madhi, what's the culture at Madhi, what kind of different projects we have at Madhi. And uh, it's just going to be a space where we understand what we do as an organization right from the founder and CEO of Madhi. So welcome Malia, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, and, uh, Sandeep, thank you. And uh, great to be sharing this space with you and uh, yeah. Awesome. So uh, I think uh, let's just start Malia with understanding a little bit more about from your perspective on what we do at Madhi currently. Right. Um, As you rightly point, uh, you know, uh, articulated uh, Madhi, our vision is foundational learning first. So every child can thrive, which means that uh, our focus is on foundational literacy and numeracy and emotional learning. Uh, uh, in the formative years of a child, which is typically between the ages of five and nine. Um, and we currently work with the Tamil Nadu government on a large uh, statewide reform for foundational learning. It's a five-year mission that the government has launched uh, called the Endomaritam Mission. And uh, we work closely with the government um, as the chief management partners for uh, Endomaritam. And uh, Alongside um, the system reform project that we are working on, we also have a couple of other pilots that we are undertaking at this moment, which we hope will again grow into large scale projects uh, over the next year or over the next few years. Uh, our focus so far has been on the supply side of education, right? Supplies being the, you know, the government system and all the things within the government system. Uh, we are increasingly looking at the demand for or generating a better quality of demand for foundation learning, which basically means working more closely with uh, the parent community and the community that um, really, you know, uh, is invested in the child's uh, learning and well-being. So hoping that over the next, you know, few years, our focus remains on foundational learning, but we tackle the problem uh, from both the demand and the supply side uh, of the issue. So that's what we do. Yeah, and I think uh, in line with that, Malia, would you like to share with us some of the key projects that we are working on at Madhi currently? Yeah, so I think I sort of answered this question, uh, you know, even as part of my response to the first question, right, that our uh, currently our um, biggest project is with the Tamil Nadu government. Uh, it is a five-year mission to improve foundational literacy and numeracy. Uh, we have a team of almost 200 that is engaged on the project. We work across all the 38 districts of Tamil Nadu um, to implement the project. And we work closely here uh, with the state leadership uh, on the conceptualizing and designing of the, of the project. Um, and that remains our biggest uh, or our, our most key project so far. Um, the others that we're working on right now and piloting it and hoping to take to scale is um, called Vidum Virupum. You may have seen uh, a few teasers of uh, the project on our social media. So Vidum Virupum works, um, as the name suggests, on bringing about uh, a change in behavior among parents and the community around the child. So they are able to um, differentiate between, you know, good education and 
you know, not and and bad education, if you will, and and then demand for uh, the quality of education to improve. So, uh, almost putting the power to demand and uh, and and change uh, the ground realities in the hands of the community and the parents. So that's Vidum Ripu. Uh, we have a couple of other smaller pilots uh, right that are running right now, and um, I think once that sort of reaches a certain stage, we we'd be sharing more details about those projects um, on our social media as well. But um, as I mentioned, uh, all our projects sort of revolve around uh, foundational uh, learning, and uh, that will continue to be our main focus for the next few years because. You know, while India has solved the problem of access to primary education, um, ensuring quality primary education still remains a, a sort of a distant dream at the moment and not one that is going to be solved very easily or quickly. And, and therefore, we feel the uh, need to keep at it. Absolutely. And I think... What uh, is coming to my mind is with Madhi, uh, you know, actually working with the government and also uh, running all these pilot projects that we run as an org. Uh, I think there will be different roles, different opportunities that we have at Madhi, right? So uh, though we understand what the different type of roles that we have at Madhi more or less is similar in terms of we have different functions, different project teams, uh, different uh, designations, etc., that and different functions and departments. But I think what uh, you know, I'm more curious to understand is in these roles, right? What are the things that are key factors when it comes to uh, project deliverables? What are some of the key roles uh, which are, let's say, government facing and while working with the government? Like, how do those roles pan out? And that is something I think we'd love to hear from you in terms of what, what difference yeah, there is. Yeah, so given that we work, um, you know, on primary education and the quality of primary education and not just ensuring access, uh, we do have roles that are very technical in nature that will require you to come from, uh, you know, a curriculum a design background or a capacity building and training background, um, a data science background, or, you know, uh, we're building a lot of tech-based platforms for uh, monitoring and assessment. So, you know, we do have an IT vertical as well. So at Madhi, very broadly put, we have, you know, uh, roles that require specialization uh, in certain domains and certain functional areas. But we also have um, roles that require very core project management uh, skills, right? It doesn't require you to necessarily come from uh, an education background or, you know, having worked on curriculum or any any specific uh, domain as such, but but having led large scale projects uh, and, and having those sort of uh, team management skills, project management skills, planning, you know, uh, documentation, uh, uh, you know, uh, to a great extent, uh, some, some degree of exposure to data analysis. So those are sort of generic, more generic and don't require our more generalist type of roles. Um, and we also have, like I said, domain specialist roles. Um, and not to forget that we have uh, quite a strong organizational development vertical as well. Uh, nobody really talks about it uh, much uh, when it comes to, you know, nonprofits, because the program team tends to be uh, sort of, you know, um, uh, the tends to have the limelight spotlight on them at the front but, end yeah yeah at the front end uh, but there is an organizational development team that you know that ensures that we have a, an organization uh, a strong and stable organization to run so we have roles that require people with fundraising backgrounds hr finance um you know, you know um uh, uh, and and those are just as important as our program roles and that also do not really require you to come from a core education sort of a background um that's again a more generalist sort of a role but uh you know requiring you to specialize in those domains be it hr or finance so these are sort of the three program and non-program under non-program and non-program sort of three 
main categories that I can think of, technical roles, generalist roles, and, you know, other uh, uh, OD, we call it OD roles. So those are the type of roles that are available at Madhi. So uh, lots, uh, lots of uh, roles to choose from. Yeah, and I think this makes me wonder, we have so many roles and, you know, people join us. So Malia, what uh, do you think it really means to be a part of the Madhi family and being a Madhi emperor? Uh, I think, you know, I, I read some time ago that, you know, um, uh, don't call your organization a family. Uh, right, because um, families have a very different set of dynamics and teams have very different set of dynamics, right? Like, for example, uh, there's this um, uh, example of saying, you know, look at your organization as as you would a sports team, right? You In a sports team, you need cohesion, you need everybody to be looking out for each other, but there are also expectations from each one to contribute towards um, the overall success of the team, right? Whereas in a family, it's unconditional. Um, so I don't think organizations uh, can be unconditional, unfortunately. I think there are obviously expectations that team members have from the organization and organizations have from team members. So I would say that... Um, at Madhi, we probably strike a, uh, we try, we try uh, and strike a balance between, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a making um, the working space here safe, um, feel like a safe space, a space where people can grow and nurture, but also, um, you know, the rigor that we expect and the kind of uh, benchmarks and the you know the expectations in terms of uh, in the pursuit of sort of excellence that also sometimes might push people outside their comfort zone to uh, do bigger things that they may not necessarily be comfortable with uh, to begin with but when they look back you know you realize that that opportunity has really um, transformed you uh, both as a person as, as as well as a professional so I would say that um what it means to be a Madhi team member is um, having a space uh, where you can um, absolutely be yourself. Uh, we we despise uh, workplace politics, uh, you know, um, and and have a sort of a zero tolerance towards uh, that. And we invest a lot in building and nurturing a culture that allows people to bring their best version, bring the best version of themselves uh, to work. So I would say that um, I'm not sure if we'll, I'll call uh, ours a family, but it's certainly um, a team that looks out for each other and pushes each other to be the best version of themselves. Uh, thank you, Bali. And I think that makes sense. And I think the context that people really, I mean, it's just my view. And since we are discussing, I think when we actually call it a Madhi family, I think it comes from a sense of, uh, like, for example, when it's a home, all of us, whatever we do is ultimately to make that home a place where it's safe and people are, you know, uh, there for each other, with each other and working towards something, even as a home or family. And I think that's how I relate to the word family, right? Because when you're spending 10, 12 hours uh, working with colleagues and a part of the organization, it's sometimes very important to have that type of trust and faith in the people that you work with. And uh, I think for me, I would interpret family that way. Uh, but I, I think I align to what you mean when you say there are limitations, boundaries and certain expectations that uh, as an employer and an employee, that relationship will always stay. Yeah. And I think it's just a different form of relationship. And I, I think that's why I'm more curious to know, uh, Malia, uh, what do you think are some of, I mean, we already know, I mean, working with Madhi has been great and I know what Madhi's core values are, but would love to know from you how... Uh, you know, we live by those values at Madhi and just hear your views on what our core values are. At Madhi. So we, you know, actually um, undertook like an extensive exercise to really, uh, you know, un and, and a fairly democratic exercise to um, understand what are the, you know, values that people associate with if we didn't have a list of core values, right? Like we were going in, uh, say blank, what are the kind of values that people would most likely associate with Madhi, 
um, especially the team members. And uh, it all sort of came down to a list of five core values, which you will see on our website as well, um, which is, you know, um, uh, sorry, just one second. Hey everyone, I should be right back. Just give us a few seconds. Sorry about that. Um, so I was saying that, you know, there are, we've identified four core values, um, which uh, are as follows, mission obsession, um, empathy, resilience, uh inquiry and integrity so uh this is what the team felt uh were the values that they associated with madi the most and uh, we zeroed in on them and how we live by them is i don't think there's a sort of a you know a, a formula for these values to convert to culture um they have to be a part of you know every aspect of our life at Madi, right from the kind of people we even recruit and select. Um, as much as possible, we try and look for value alignment even at the time of selection and through their uh, stint or to, through their tenure at Madi, there are different, um, uh, at different points, we look for value alignment. Uh, value alignment is a very core part of uh, even performance evaluation at Madi. In fact, we don't just look at, you know, whether your deliverables, project deliverables have been met and, you know, your OKRs have been um, delivered. Uh, value and cultural alignment is actually, you know, a, 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 a premium is actually placed on um, the individual demonstrating cultural and value alignment. And we uh, call out, um, when when people are exemplifying uh, Madi's uh, core values, we also call out when we see that there's a divergence. Um, so therefore, it it just you know it's it's constantly there in your consciousness um, as a team member, and you keep reinforcing it uh, throughout different parts of your interaction. There are different you know group interactions, individual interactions, and you keep reinforcing them both in word as well as action. And that's how I guess uh, you know um, the, the the culture reflects the core values, um, driven both organically and sometimes inorganically as well. When you are, you know, very specifically and very um, uh, clearly calling them out, almost as a culture code that people need to follow. Thank you so much, Molly. I think what's going through my mind right now is. It's just, I think I've been working with Madi now for the past six months. It's been six months. And when, you act, when you're actually saying that value is a part of how just everyone behaves at Madi, I can totally resonate with it. Like, I don't have to think separately that these are our values. When I look at it, it just kind of flows. Uh, I think it's in my DNA now. And it's just, you know, kind of sort of clubbed somewhere and... Uh, I, I think that's how we, that's how much our values are imbibed in, right, from what type of people come in and how they work at Madi, right? It's just day to day how we and how we take things Yeah, forward. I think it's, 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 it's very difficult for somebody who is, um, you know, is, is completely misaligned culturally to come in and then completely transform into a different person, right? That's just not possible, which is why even at the point of recruiting and selecting, we look for value alignment uh, in people and, and how they respond to certain scenario-based questions that we uh, ask. So, you know, uh, and uh, finding you, uh, Sugandhi, and then uh, seeing how beautifully you aligned with Mahmi's value just validates that, you know, that process works. So, uh, Absolutely. happy to be like that. Yeah, and I think which... Actually, which makes me think, and the reason I'm asking this is because a lot of times 
when we talk about values right it's very closely related to culture and what just the, the one thing that I, uh, we would love to know i think uh, everyone who is here on the forum would also love to know is what does culture really mean uh, at madhi uh, what do you think what culture means madhi for you and or um culture is you know is is a set of behaviors that uh the 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 organization rewards and the set of behaviors that the organization does not tolerate right so every organization has its own culture and in some cultures um you know certain behaviors are rewarded for example if you're competitive and you are sort of you know a hustler uh then some organizational cultures actually reward you for it right whereas um maybe at madhi hustling is not what is rewarded uh collaboration is rewarded and and you know um and and uh, being a team player is is more rewarded so i would say that culture is a manifestation of your core values and it's basically your core values at play and um a lot of the times the leadership is 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 expected or is is um supposed to model uh the the kind of behaviors that would align with the organizational culture and that's what we try and do here so if we say that uh you know this is uh i think it's it's fairly um for somebody at madhi it's it's fairly straightforward to see <clears throat> how it starts with our core values and uh, there is actually something called a culture code at madhi uh, where we've outlined what each value actually means for example mission obsession what does it mean i mean it's a word and it could mean different things to different people but we've tried to you know um a, a, a sort of draft uh, a definition for mission obsession given madhi's context and also outlined about four or five ideal behaviors that would define um a person uh, as being you know culturally aligned with madhi's core values and culture so i think we've tried to make it as transparent as possible in terms of though culture and you know in in so many ways is intangible sometimes you, it's just how you feel uh it can't always be manifested in actions it's just you know when you say that uh, madhi has an open culture uh you may not be able to define it in words but you would just feel that way right that it's it's an open culture so i would say that if i absolutely have to define culture at madhi i would say that it we draw from our core values and uh, model our behaviors uh, around uh, those core values and that's what uh, you know makes uh, makes madhi's culture tick yeah i mean i think culture is also such i mean just like values i think whatever we do every day kind of comes together and becomes the culture of an organization and especially what we do when you know the onus is on us every time we make a decision the thought that goes behind it the rationale how we do it i think just each action kind of sort of get puts together the culture of an organ i, I think at madhi it just comes together beautifully with the values and the behaviors and how it comes together for us when we work at madhi. Uh, so malia i think we have discussed what we do at madhi what type of roles we have and what it really means to be a madhi employee in terms of what values uh, we hold dear to us and we also discussed a bit about what culture at madhi is which brings me to my next question about where do you think madhi is headed or what do you want to see different at madhi in the future i want to see more at madhi um i think i i also probably answered this question partially um so far our focus has been on looking at the problem uh, from the supply side of the issue which is working with you know the suppliers of education right the government the teachers the um, officers uh, teacher trainers teacher educators and these are all people who are entrusted with the responsibility of supplying good quality education and um we've so far believed that if you can fix the quality of supply then you know that will probably solve the problem uh over the years i think we've come to the realization that for a problem as complex 
as the foundational learning um, crisis to be solved, it's it's not sufficient for the supply side issues to be uh, sorted alone. There is a there is a large um, you know there's a large um, component in this which is the parents and the communities. Uh, these are you know huge levers of change which I don't think as Madhi we've tapped into or we've looked at as um as our sort of uh you know the the lever of change so going forward i would say that we are going to be looking at working with the parent community more closely um and trying and bring this convergence between the supply and demand side because it's only when there is a certain uh pressure from um the the demand side on the supply side, that the supply side will respond favorably, right? I mean, um, we all know in India, unless you know there is a public demand for something, uh, the, the the politics of the country does not always look at it as an issue that needs to be resolved. It doesn't become a priority um, for the system to respond to a problem unless there is a massive demand for it. Um, and the same with uh, public education as well unless the parents realize that um, there is a certain gap in the quality of education that the children are receiving and um, they make it a, a critical issue for um, the system to, to fix and respond to, uh, we're going to be sort of going around in circles. So, which is why going forward in the future, uh, I think we will look at both demand and supply as two sides of the problem that needs to be solved and and not limit our focus to um, the supply side issues alone. So I think that's what you can expect uh, in terms of um, the difference in the approach to problem solving that we will likely take uh, at Madhi over the next few years. Uh, you know, Malia, I have often heard this term and I can't even tell you how many times, right? First principles thinking, especially since I switched to the social sector from the corporate sector. I, I don't think in the corporate sector, we would really call it first principles thinking. Uh, we would call it problem solving, root cause analysis. There were different names, obviously. Uh, but whenever people used to say that, you know, some person is a first principles thinker and an organization, you know, has first principle thinking at its core and that's how they solve problems. I used to wonder what it really means. But I think when I'm hearing more and more about how they're explaining what we are going to do at Madhi, right? Uh, I think it just, maybe today I understood first principle thinking a bit more. It's like actually understanding what we need to change and actually putting in steps and processes in place or doing pilots to understand how to take that forward without just jumping in on some solution that may or may not work and actually scaling up things that will work uh, and come together beautifully in terms of scale. I think it's crucial for any organization. And I'm really happy to be part of Madhi where we look at scaling uh, at every step whenever we start a project, how we can go about it. And I think that's critical. And this is not coming from a point of view of success of an organization. Like as a nonprofit, I think our objective is we are out there to create an impact, make a difference. And I think at scale, that's how much more impact we are creating. And that becomes so critical sometimes. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for creating such a beautiful organization. Uh, this is one thing, Merlia, and I think this is coming from a place of having worked at Madhi for so long and now we are discussing <coughs> where we want Madhi to be. And I think as an organization, I had one thing in mind, I think for which Madhi uh, in the future will be known or hoping we will be known is how we become a learning organization overall, right? And how critical we are going to make learning and development a part of Madhi as an organization. Uh, and this would be irrespective of designations or levels, right? And uh, we are trying to create holistic learning. So I think from my view, I would also want to see Madhi actually become that organization where people get to learn laws uh, organically on the job and otherwise also. And I think that is also something I had on my mind uh, when I think about Madhi. Uh, 
Absolutely. I think I, I only touched upon what we might see differently programmatically, but you're absolutely right. I think we are on that path of creating a robust uh, learning and development um, you know, system for uh, people who join Madhi. And I think uh, we definitely want people to, you know, whenever they decide to leave, to look back and, and feel that they've really grown as people and as professionals during their time at Madhi and that we've consciously invested in, in their growth as well. So I'm sorry I missed that out, but thank you for, uh, you know, uh, making sure that that you covered that. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's okay. I think it's just, it's just amazing to see that learning becomes priority for an organization. Uh, because generally, I think what I've learned since we are, especially we work towards, you know, solving the foundation learning crisis. And the whole thing is around how kids are learning. And I think, you know, it's not just about kids, Moralia. I think what I've realized is that each stage of our life, career, uh, wherever we go, I think if we understand how to learn, what to learn, and what it really means in terms of quality of learning, uh, I, I think that's very, very critical to personal development and growth. And yeah, like every action, every new idea, every new project that we do in an organization teaches you something. And how we look at that learning is what really matters. I think. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. So uh, thank you uh, so much for sharing all of this. And I think these were some of the things we had, uh, you know, in uh, our session. And I think we had some questions from the audience as well uh, uh, through the posts that we had shared before Ask Me Anything. And I would love for us to touch upon it and feel free. I think uh, you or me, either of us can take up. Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Sandhi. I mean, I'll, I'll chip in, but uh, you probably will be, uh, uh, you know, the right person to take most of these questions. Maybe I'll, I'll, sure. I'll try and chip in in a couple of places. Uh, absolutely. And I'll rope you in if uh, wherever I can. Thank you. And I think the first question that people really reached out to us, Malia, and I think this I've not only seen for this session, but overall when people have approached us uh, even otherwise is uh, people are more and more asking whether we have remote freelancing and I will also add internship part-time opportunities at Madhi and uh, I just want to share that yes we do have certain roles that are remote roles at Madhi uh, though we treat them as external freelancer contracts so the remote roles are all freelance consulting contract roles with Madhi uh, most of the times and part-time roles also we do have but only in specific cases and we would need to understand the level of commitment when you say part-time etc it's not like a volunteering opportunity part-time means you would have to work for x number of hours and you would be having OKRs, etc. Right? Like those things stay in place even in part-time opportunities at Madhi. The one thing I want to tell people here that uh, in terms of internships, uh, we don't really have an internship model model per se. But I think going forward from this year, we may explore more options where we can get uh, interns on board. Uh, and once we have that model in place, we'll develop de definitely post it even on social media. Uh, but that is something we will have to develop as an organization, right? So, but definitely we have remote freelancing and part-time opportunities at Madhi. Uh, duration of the hiring process. So, generally, I would say that typically a role would probably take uh, anywhere between one to three weeks to close. One week being the minimum when everything happens uh, immediately, and three weeks, uh, uh, let's say, which is like an average scenario. Uh, there are also uh, roles that take much longer uh, just because of the complexity of the role uh, or the different uh, levels, uh, you know, levels of interview or process that we have for that role, etc. Uh, so since there is a question about duration of hiring process, let me also briefly share what the hiring process looks like at Madhi. So we have uh, application form on the website. So when someone... Uh, wants to uh, take up a role, they would go check out the role. If they feel the role is right for them, they apply through the application form. But that is the first step. Uh, there is a screening of the application. Uh, once the screening of the application happens, either the candidate is accepted or rejected. Accepted candidates go to the next round where, uh, you know, there is a very brief call with the hiring manager to understand the role better and to understand some basic uh, you know, uh, 
skills, etc., that is required for the role, and if there is an alignment. Once that happens, uh, the next round is generally a pre-work round, and uh, we take pre-work rooms in this year party, uh, because pre-work is where we actually, it's more like a technical round where uh, we understand more about your skills and the fit for the role. And once the pre-work is completed and you could get selected in the pre-work round, there is a final interview round. Right. And the final interview covers a lot of aspects. Uh, there are technical questions, there are culture related questions, and uh, there is also a portion in certain uh, roles where we have role play, and our interviews are a lot of fun at times, and that's the feedback we have received from candidates who have attended our interviews. But uh, necessarily, these four steps are our processes, uh, uh, you know, uh, are a part of our hiring process. <laughs> And generally, each step may take about two to three weeks. So overall, the hiring process will take anywhere from 18 to 21 days. And that is something I wanted to touch upon. Uh, is education background and prior teaching experience mandatory to join Madhi? I would uh, actually love for Malia to probably take this question. I think for some roles, uh, it's necessary. Like I mentioned, there are roles that require you to you know, uh, if it's a curriculum development role or a teacher training or capacity building role, then definitely we would require the person uh, who's applying um, to come from an education background uh, or a prior teaching background, prior teaching experience background, because, the, you know, that's the only way you could have built skills um, in those in those domains. Uh, whereas there are many, many other roles that do not require you to come from an education or a teaching background. And um, that is something that we clearly lay out in the JD. So if you go through the job description document, you will be able to see whether this requires, the particular role requires you to come from an education background or uh, uh, have prior teaching experience, or it, it doesn't really require you to, you know, uh, have those sort of, uh, have that kind of a profile. Um, so, I mean, in, in, in several cases, we just think that if you come from an education background or have prior teaching experience, it just, you know, makes it quicker and easier for somebody to sort of assimilate and understand the context but um, we've also had people from you know very diverse backgrounds coming in and fitting right in so it really depends on the role and the role requirement so I would say that um, if you do not come from an education or teaching background there are still many roles that are open and uh, you would need to go through the respective uh, job description uh, documents for you to know whether it is a mandatory requirement or not yeah thank you Molia, for sharing that and uh, i think definitely especially in the support functions that we have right like uh, people and culture uh, finance or it domains uh, i think we do look at uh, strength in those skills required for those functions uh, more than looking at whether there is an additional uh, teaching experience etc so yeah I, I think there are a lot of opportunities out there uh, at Madhi for people even without an education background and a teaching experience uh, mental well-being at workplace uh, I think at Madhi we take mental well-being very seriously and uh, I would like to uh, address this earlier, feel free to add later, but uh, I think having worked with Madhi closely in the last uh, seven months and, uh, you know, having interacted with a lot of team members, and I feel as an organization, we do take well-being quite seriously. And I think uh, people even take care of each other's well-being uh, at Madhi. And... In fact, it's an interesting thing, Amali, I would like to share that. I think in our check-in, uh, we have a check-in fortnightly between managers and team members where we actually run a well-being survey for managers separately and for team members. It's just two questions where as an organization, we try to understand where team members are in terms of their uh, mental well-being. And uh, if there are red flags extra as an organization, we would want to uh, address that. Uh, take care and provide as much support as we can. So uh, I, I think from my point of view, I think we take mental well-being quite seriously at Mati. And I think we have provisions, we have put steps in place so that we can take care of each other. Malia, do you want to add anything to that? No, uh, Sukandi, I think, um, you know, we look at 
uh, mental well-being as the individual responsibility as well as the organization's responsibility. So we do um, encourage people to also take up, uh, you know, take up, uh, take steps that will ensure that you are uh, mentally healthy and are in a in a space that you're able to contribute. If not, you know, um, you, we, we welcome and encourage conversations around mental health um, with managers in case you need that break. Uh, we do have, um, you know, uh, counselors, access to counselors, sometimes even pro bono access to counselors in-house. But we look at it as something that it's not just... Um, the responsibility of the organization, but also of the individual to uh, engage or invest in healthy mental health practices. And the organization provides as much support as possible. But, you know, I will tell you in this day and age, this continues to be a struggle, especially given the challenge that, you know, the kind of challenges that we work on. It's not always um, possible to ensure uh, you know, 100% uh, work-life balance 100% of the time. So we do not uh, want to, you know, give an impression that, you know, it, we do a nine to five and then, you know, it's it's sort of a uh, easy working environment. It's tough. It's very tough. And um, we, we try and uh, hold each other uh, when things get rough. We try and become each other's support system when things get rough. But I I think I, I, I don't want to uh, underplay the fact that given the challenge and given the the kind of um, uh, uh, stakeholders that we work with, uh, it, it does take a toll on your mental health. And uh, the only way to, to do this, especially if you're passionate about working on a problem as chronic as this, is to invest in good mental health practices and build your level of uh, your levels of mental resilience um, as much as possible. I think we've, I've come a long way, uh, you know, having worked uh, at Madhi for, for uh, you know, uh, since in, in the last seven to eight years, I think I've come a long way in terms of being able to identify my coping mechanism. And uh, when things get tough, it's not, as you can imagine, it's it's never easy um, being a leader and a, and a founder. But over the years, if you are truly sort of obsessed about solving this problem and obsessed about working in this sector, then I think um, you figure out ways to work around it and you figure out ways to cope and um, and, and to sort of turn up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. I think that was beautifully summarized. Uh, it's not easy, right? We all know it's not easy. And we have those crazy times. We have great times too, but we have those crazy times. But I think the best part is that we also have each other's back during such times. We try to as much as possible. So I think that's great. Uh, there's a point here about working with the government since we've already covered it uh, in our first findings. And I think there are a couple of questions it. in the chat, uh, Sugandhi. Maybe we should... Yeah, I'll be addressing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just one point before we go to the chat questions. Uh, the language requirements, right? So... For some roles, there is definitely a need uh, for team members to know Tamil, uh, read or write Tamil, which is, again, in detail written in our GD. So wherever there is a language requirement or mandatory language requirement, it is mentioned in our GD specifically for every role. But otherwise, a language is not a barrier for any department. Uh, so, Mohli, I think there are some questions on the chat, like you said, I think we should just take that. I think sure. I saw one question. Uh, with the newly reported COVID cases, there are chances of school shutdowns. Uh, what backup measures uh, do you have uh, Do you have in hand to take your projects further? That's a question from Yoga. Yeah, uh, I really, really hope that it doesn't come to school shut school shutting down because we have now come to realize that um, for the segment that we work with, government schools, young children, home learning has simply not worked because uh, children came back despite all the efforts of home learning and despite all the efforts uh, to provide you know digital home learning content, children have still come back to school with massive learning gaps. So I I don't believe that uh, home learning really 
effectively solves the problem. But if we are looking at a stopgap solution, then uh, Tamil Nadu, as you know, already has launched something called Illam Thedi Kalvi, which is your, uh, you know, community, you know, centers that children go to, um, and and uh, there is one uh, ITK volunteer who's responsible to uh, responsible for about five to ten children in their immediate communities, and they spend uh, an hour and hour or two in the evenings really helping them. Uh, with some remedial teaching and learning. And that has proved uh, to be quite effective um, based on the research that has come out. So I think we'll probably have to resort to something like that. But I truly, uh, truly, truly hope that we don't have to uh, go back to that situation ever again. Yeah, uh, fingers crossed. I think let's hope for the best. And I think we'll have a solution for it, if at all. We have to figure out it. Uh, Malia, there's a very interesting question that was there in the registration form. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of want to touch upon it. I think someone uh, just asked that uh, uh, do you even take people who uh, do not know Tamil but are passionate to work in the education domain, which is very different from language requirements? Uh, and I just want to uh, share that uh, if you're passionate about the social sector and if you think there are roles we have that align with your potential, please apply. Please go ahead and apply. Uh, for roles that require you to know Tamil, it is defined. So please do not uh, hesitate. To apply. So I think I just wanted to call it out because there were three cases where there were yeah, I think um, for some roles, Tamil becomes a mandatory requirement, but for many roles, it's not. Yeah. Uh, there is another question. Does Madhi have work from home option in the light of flexibility? Uh, we, as an organization, we, uh, we currently are hybrid. We are working out of office and we are working out of home. Uh, we definitely have probation period at Madhi, which is the first six months. And during the first three months of the probation, employees have to kind of work from office. This is uh, keeping in mind that employees are understanding their role, their job, understanding the people around them, understanding the culture at Madhi. So working from home during the first three months is something that we do not encourage. We would want people to work out of office. Uh, but uh, beyond three months, uh, I think it depends on what type of role you are. Uh, sometimes if you're in government facing roles, it may require you to be in office all five days of the week, etc. But otherwise, we are flexible as and when required for people to work from home. Malia, do you want to add something on the work from home? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, in fact, the world is now gravitating more and more towards work from office because they've sort of realized the uh, benefits of working in an environment where you're learning from your peers and, you know, um, the casual conversations that happen in a working environment. So I think, uh, but at the same time, you know, there is also some, there are some benefits to uh, allowing people some flexibility to work from home. So there are some roles that allow for that uh, kind of a flexibility. Uh, whereas if you're working in a role that is uh, primarily uh, requires you to be in the field or is a you know a front facing role with the government then it becomes very difficult for that flexibility to be available so again it depends uh, we do have a fairly flexible work culture in the sense that we do you know allow people to work from home um, if it's necessary and if if being in office is absolutely not required but we highly highly encourage um you know, physical interaction in the office space, because I think there is some magic that happens, uh, you know, there. And uh, and we've seen that. We've we've seen people want that more and more. So we've kept it fairly flexible. You you can work from home on, on a few days, but being in office is also a requirement that, um, that, that we have uh, alongside that. In fact, Merlia, I think when I joined Mati and I'm at a place where I think work from office works for me. I know it may be different for different people, but I just enjoy how we you know, quickly brainstorm, come up with solutions. It allows you, somehow I find it so much more efficient. It's just my view though, but, and I just love it. Yeah, so even with the certain energy that you draw from being around people in a physical space and, you know, body language and, and 
you know, um, I think uh, sometimes uh, when it's virtual, you keep it to the point. Whereas when you're in a physical space, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, camaraderie that happens. A lot of jokes get yeah. cracked, and you know, so there's a lot of lot of other dynamics that I can as well. Uh, so we have a question from uh, Malavini Shanmuga. I'm working as a coding math teacher, but there is no roles in curriculum development, which is open. So uh, Malavini, what I would suggest is, uh, I'm just going to put in our uh, HR ID here for everyone on chat. Uh, please drop us an email with your resume. Even if there are no current openings, we will add you to our talent pool and we will contact you the minute there is some opening. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, put uh, the email ID or chat. Here. Yeah, so please do send us an email and we will get back to you. Awesome. I think, uh, Malia, I think those were a lot of things that uh, we discussed today. And thank you so much. I know there are uh, there were, I think, 10 to 14 people in the audience uh, today. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And uh, thank you everybody for joining and uh, for all the great questions and you know for hearing us out patiently. Please do look up uh, opportunities and uh, you know opening get posted on Mati quite often. So keep checking out our website for any sort of new openings. Please do follow us on social media because that is where we keep advertising the most recent. Things. So thank you and um, you know have a great week and weekend ahead. Thank you so much, Mualia. Thank you, everyone. See you all soon with Thank another you, live. Thank you so much. This is a lovely chat. Thank you. Bye. Bye.